So um, one of the the last proper jobs that I had uh, before uh, I started working as a full time as a writer was I used to work at a, a casino in the um, Chinatown district of Liverpool, uh, and I kind of started off on the bar. And uh, it was actually it was a pretty good job, really. I really, really enjoyed uh, working there, and uh, it was really nice chatting to uh, all the regulars about their various kind of ideas, their kind of schemes and ways to kind of like beat the house. Um, but in all fairness, they probably shouldn't have been talking to me about those things because uh, the bar was wired for sound, uh, and uh, the management could hear everything that they said. But, um, but in all fairness, I don't think anyone really could ever get away with anything um, underhand in the casino, not least because there's over kind of like 200 security cameras all kind of like hidden up in the ceiling in between the kind of fibre optic lights. I'm sure I'm not going to, you know, blow any minds by suggesting that when a camera is running, whoever is on the other end of that camera is going to act in a way which is kind of predisposed to, to the way they believe they should act, uh, you know, like uh, uh, a driver caught on uh, a traffic camera will think there's a kind of exterior force kind of judging their driving and kind of but behave accordingly you know that they're, they're, they're playing the role of being a Sunday driver uh, in the same way that say like a, um, uh, like an, an audience member for some sort of live show that uh, Alan Carr's just done will then leave the studio feeling completely humorless uh, and is wondering what's possessed their diaphragms for the last two hours or that they're playing uh, liking Alan Carr, and I, and I think the same thing what happens in the casino. Like I think people play at being gamblers. You know, you kind of you get kind of faked into this kind of weird James Bond narrative, and you get a little bit scared to kind of to, to kind of break frame and kind of do what you want. So um, I wrote this poem. Um, I wrote this poem uh, as a kind of alternative narrative, maybe for uh, for some of my regulars in another world where. A gambler gets to win and, and, uh, and then leave. Uh, it's called Casino Exit. He stands and it starts with the valet's alarm. For one second, time is noticeable by its absence. His adversaries stack their remaining chips into new democratic assemblies, yellow fingers clashing on the purple felt. This is the only window he needs. Half man, half Bellagio hair gel, the deserter flips a chip to the croupier, then vanishes sideways into a group of off-duty Laotian kitchen hands. The casino grins, vestibules swarming with garrulous fruit machines. Men in pink waistcoats play eye tennis across the pit. Hypno carpets are cranked from arouse to baffle, yet somehow our man is already jogging through the mezzanine, burning the trail as he goes kicking his shoes down an empty lift shaft, a champagne cork neatly masking a fart. The croupier opens his hand, a chocolate doubloon, and it's not even Christmas. He powders it into a mirrored ashtray. There are sightings of a man disguised as a disaffected kitchen porter taking a shortcut through a water feature. Tuxedo thugs cram into the stairwell, popping a child's balloon with a cocktail stick as they pass. He's ours, he's ours, they yell over their shoulders. Ours, 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 echoes the man, following them to the stockroom door. The casino sends their blade runner up to the roof. A soliloquy is made about risk versus reward, weather systems falling around him. Our hero limps through corkscrewing corridors, neon autographs burn onto the backs of his eyes. From here on out, all doors must be buzz-killed open. Each is the generic voice of a local radio presenter. What's brown and sticky? asks the door. Coastal wetlands, he replies. The door succumbs. Why did the pony cough? asks the next probably some sort of obstructive pulmonary disorder. Men with gloves convene in the sky lounge. The Blade Runner is giving a slideshow. The men are dying. Their eyes appear to be drawn on. A sweaty lieutenant intrudes. Sir, we found his hat on a polystyrene tanuki, but he's gone. 
What can the pit boss do but push buttons? Look, there he goes. Emerging from under an opera singer's dress, he's cleared the perilous spiral staircase. The lobby sways, no trap doors, and out, out across the empty car park, under a cosmos of shorted fiber optics, leaving the odds crippled on the bank of an accelerated estuary, a black speedboat seen only by the glitter of its wake.